Okay, can you hear me? Okay, yeah. Um, so um, in this presentation, I will give you an overview about this new DPDK GPW library that we recently introduced in DPDK to basically address uh, the needs of GPU real-time packet processing applications. A bit of background. So these kind of applications are applications where you have your GPU functions, one or more functions, running on the GPU, that, and they have to process packets in network packets of whatever kind of protocol. And basically, you need to realize an inline packet processing of those packets. So you need to create a pipeline where packets come in from the network interface, oops, sorry, for the network interface, they flow directly into the GPU memory, so directly from the network card into the GPU memory. At that, once packets reach the GPU memory, the GPU processing wake up somehow and basically produces some output. At that point, you can decide if you want to just, uh, I mean, clean up the pipeline, send back on the network the modified packets or the um, I mean, outcome of your uh, processing, whatever. But this is the flow you realize in this, kind of, uh, in this kind of applications. And basically, as you can notice here, the CPU is kind of the man in the middle between the GPU and the network card because the CPU has to uh, synchronize the work of the network card in receiving packets. The network card will DMA the packets directly into the GPU memory. But then the CPU has to wake up the processing on the GPU, on the GPU saying, hey, the packets are ready in memory. You can just go ahead and process them. So it's super, uh, let's say, important to achieve this overall uh, mechanism at the lowest latency possible in order to support high throughput networks. And this is the work we did. Basically, we, um, as I said, since DPDK 2111, we introduced a new GPU dev library that basically is a generic library that you can use to deal with any kind of GPU device to do some basic but also advanced functionalities like recognize a GPU device has another PCA device, uh, enumerate the GPUs on your system, and do some more complex tasks like allocate aligned GPU memory on your GPU device, um, register a CPU memory buffer in the GPU memory address space, or vice versa, allocate a GPU memory buffer and expose it to the, to the direct access of the CPU, so without going through any specific uh, proprietary API to access the GPU memory. And finally, uh, also, we provided a way to uh, put, to create a low latency communication between the CPU and the GPU in order to accomplish what I was explaining in the previous slides, so the communication between, I mean, well, CPU telling to the GPU, you can just start processing the packets because packets reach uh, the GPU memory. In combination with the generic GPU dev library, we also provided the um, specific GPU driver, so we opened kind of the path to many vendors, many GPU vendors, providing, in our case, the specific implementation of G the GPU driver in CUDA. But of course, any vendor is welcome. You, um, we are planning to implement an open source OpenCL version of the driver. And again, any vendor, any GPU vendor is super welcome to implement their own um, GPU driver for their specific GPU. And of course, it also, today we tested it with MLX5 driver, but it's the same. Any network card vendor can just go ahead, plug in their own driver and see if everything works, basically. In order to test this overall thing, there is the test GPU dev application that you can find it in DPDK, but outside of DPDK, in another public GitHub repo, you will find the L2 Forward MV application that basically is the vanilla DPDK L2 Forward application empowered with the GPU. So basically the swap of the MAC addresses that usually in the to forward application you have the CPU doing it. In this application, it will be the GPU. So it's just, you know, uh, for demonstrating what you can do with this library. So there are many features in this library. I would like just to focus on the most two relevant functions. The first one is through this library, you can receive or also send packets directly um, back and forth the GPU memory. So let's talk about the receive side, but for the send side, it's the same. In order to achieve this in DPDK, you can use a combination of these four functions to create a GPU memory mempool. So basically, you allocate a chunk of GPU memory, you register it within DPDK, and you DMA map it for the ATH device that you want to use in combination with the mempool, 
and then you create an external memory mempool using the chunk of GPU memory you just registered. The final effect is this one, basically. You have a DPDK mempool where M buffs are external M buffs. So the M buff header, so the metadata part of the M buff, reside in CPU memory, so the network card can access them, can modify them, and nothing in the DPDK control path is changed, basically. But the actual payload of the M buff resides in GPU memory. So this means that the network card, when the, if you attach this D, uh, DPDK mempool to the network card to a receive queue, when the network card will receive packets, packets will directly flow into the GPU memory. The other most important feature that you can find in the library is this communication list. So this is a typical layout of an application that wants to offload some packet processing on the GPU. Uh, specifically, this is the layout of the L2 forward and the application, but it's a quite common uh, layout that you can find in many applications. Basically, you have two, C uh, well, the minimum requirement is to have two CPU threads, one dedicated to receive packets and provide the packets to the GPU processing, and another thread dedicated to wait for the completion of the GPU processing and then clean up the MBUF, set, modify the MBUF, or, I mean, do uh, the finalization of the pipeline, let's say. So these are the two CPU threads. On the other side, you have the GPU processing, so your function that you loaded on the GPU that is waiting to receive new packets, process them, and then send the feedback to the, let's say, send thread, transmission thread. In order to accomplish the synchronization across these three uh, players, you can use the D um, DPDK GPU dev communication list that basically is a list um, allocated in a kind of a shared memory shared between the GPU and the CPU so they can both access it and modify it. And you can use it to synchronize, uh, as I said, all the players in this picture. So the CPU thread receives packets in MBUF and then through the DPDK uh, GPU dev uh, library um, basically, it populates the next item of the communication list, so the first one in this case, with the list of MBUFs, MBUF addresses, of course, and the status of the item. So when this process is done, this item has the MBUFs received in GP memory, and it is set to ready. On the other side, the processing was polling on the first item, so as soon as it sees that the flag, status flag of the first item is set to ready, the GPU processing basically reads the MBUFs in GPU memory, mem MBUFs addresses, and then process them. And eventually set the same item in status of done, meaning I'm done processing the MBUFs you provided in this structure. And so on for all the other items of the list. Finally, the remaining thread here basically waits for the items in the communication list to be set to done. Uh, meaning the processing happened on the packets and I can do my cleanup, my sanding, or whatever I want to do. Okay, these were uh, the generic, uh, let's say, well, the most important points of the library. I would like to provide you three uh, practical use cases where we use this library successfully. The first one is the Arial 5G software stack. So recently, NVIDIA started this effort in the 5G ecosystem, basically providing the lower layer of the overall, let's say, 5G network, doing basically signal processing on the GPU. And this is a, an a, a use case, an example of GPU real-time packet processing applications because packets are flowing into the GPU memory and you have to, do, to apply your GPU signal processing algorithm on top of them. So this is how it works. We have wireless clients here, 5G clients, sending data to the radio units. Radio units are sending data to our, let's say, um, aerial 5G baseband unit that is receiving packets, and thanks to DPDK, and it, it basically creates a DPDK GPU mempool, so it receives packets directly in GPU memory, and thanks still to, the, to, the, to DPDK, the CPU can both ask to the network card to receive packets in GPU memory, but also can wake up the GPU preprocessing that we have, um, in the area of 5G that basically is responsible to reconstruct the original payload that was framed to multiple buffers, validate the, um, the, the reconstructed, the, the rebuilt payload, and basically um, wake up the actual signal processing. The, so there is a first GPU processing stage here, validate the, uh, the, the inputs, the, the data, 
uh, rebuild the frame, and then start the, the processing. But TPDK is super useful here in the first stage of the processing on the, let's say, network side of the problem. Another, um, another application where we, use, we are planning to use um, the GPU dev library is Morpheus. So Morpheus is an AI uh, pipeline that is used to basically do network analysis or um, to detect cybersecurity uh, problems, information gathering, if you connect it to a network, um, all of this kind of you know, network and security activity related to packets transitioning into a network using AI meaning it runs on the GPU, meaning it has to process packets from the network directly, well, in, in the GPU. So it makes a lot of sense to directly receive packets in GPU memory to expose them to, to the Morpheus AI uh, pipeline. Um, and so even in this case, the situation is quite similar. Uh, DPDK is here um, receiving, well, sniffing the traffic from the network, uh, receiving packets in GPU memory, coordinating the effort between the network card and the GPU to do packet filtering in this case. So it's not um, data reconstruction here, or data reordering. Here is more, um, I'm, I can use the PDK and RT flow rules to distinguish packets at the very first stage, but then I need more complex packet filters and I want to make them to run in parallel and be fast, so have a function on the GPU is good because you can process a lot of packets in parallel. So that's why they defined a GPU packet filtering, second stage of, of filtering basically of packets. When good packets are recognized, they are stored somewhere else in GPU memory in a format that is convenient for the Morpheus uh, pipeline to access them. And then the, let's say, um, inferencing can start. Final example I have is the um, FRB detection. So um, here in France, the Paris Observatory started this effort to detect um, fast radio burst um, in the packets coming from the Nanofar telescope. Uh, basically, this is how it works. Uh, so far, um, telescopes were observing the sky um, for, uh, I mean, so many reasons, and they were basically storing the, the result of data observation somewhere in order to do um, basically offline analysis of this kind of, um, of, of the data accumulated uh, in the storage. The problem is that FRB um, are kind of sudden phenomena that can happen at any time. It can take a few nanoseconds up to three seconds. So it, I mean, time detection of this FRB, um, of FRB phenomena uh, in real time, let's say, in order to better understand uh, what's happening. So they are proposing a new solution to basically um, do GPU processing of the, of the data coming from the Nanofar telescope, but still, you need, to, in this, in, as in the other uh, use cases, basically you need to receive packets in, uh, in GPU memory, do some kind of first staging analysis of the packets you're receiving, detect packets, kind of packets, distinguish uh, different frames in a given time slot, and then once you have the data reconstructed, um, rebuilt, coming from the, from the Nanofar telescope, you can just start, start uh, the GPU detection um, of the frames. So they found a super uh, helpful solution, let's say, that they, they, built this, uh, they, they found this DPDK GPDev library a super helpful tool to implement this thing still on the receive side. Um, and again, having D, uh, DPDK to receive packets in GPU memory and wake up from the CPU, the GPU processing to rebuild frames coming from the, the telescope um, and then do the FRB detection in line, basically, in real time. So it was fast than was, uh, what I was expected. So um, these are all the references about all the things I mentioned. Uh, just um, if you want to have more insights about this technology, how to use it, and what are, let's say, future extensions and so on, please go here. This is a blog post uh, where I'm actually uh, digging into a lot of details, how you can deal with 
applications where you have both CPU and GPU in the picture, how you can launch tasks on the GPU in a, um, let's say, convenient way in order to be really real time and so on. So um, please have a look at this blog post. But generally speaking, again, these are all the references and you're welcome to, to provide the feedback. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Yes, we do. Uh, hi, thanks for uh, your talk. It's a very interesting topic. Uh, for all uh, these three example, I saw all the traffic actually came from NIC, right? I just wonder if that's possible the whole system can work in with another way. For example, the, uh, your GPU actually generates all the rendering, rendering results for whatever, right? Like a VR, like a video. Sorry, can, can, you, you, can you speak a bit louder? Yeah, I can okay, ask. okay. Sorry. Yeah, I, 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 just, I just wonder if the system can work in with another direction, like the GPU will produce the rendering result for the either video or VR, whatever, mm -hmm. and then the GPU can push the traffic, go to directly to the NIC and then they can send out. Is that the direction also working? So, yeah. So the send side also working. I focused on the, on the receive side because of the examples, but also the send side working works. So if you create a DPDK mempool, you have packets in GP memory. You can receive packets in GP memory, but you can also produce the packet in GP memory and then send directly so from the, the GP So the, GP, uh, the GPU display memory can, can push to the NIC directly without go through the uh, CPU memory, right? Right. Uh, yeah. So without having the CPU in the picture, so basically yeah. you're saying that just remove the CPU from the picture and have the GPU producing packets and pushing them on the yeah. network card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y yes, but um, not now with this solution because uh, anyway, DPDK is a CPU framework, so you have to have somehow the CPU in the in the picture here. Oh yeah, yeah. Con uh, for control paths, it's okay. I just say in the data path, the traffic actually can. Uh, send it to NIC directly, right? Yeah. Without any issue, with a P PCIe yes. P2P, uh, peer to peer, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, underneath. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah. yeah, I have a question with respect to your GPU MBUF allocation. So, in your case, you are allocating the actual MBUF data into the GPU memory. Mm -hmm. Is that accessible to CPU as well? Um, yeah, so that's a good question. Um, if you need to access it from the CPU, you have two options. Um, either you can create a DPDK um, mempool with CPU pinned memory, so CPU memory visible from the GPU, so they can both access it. Or another option is to use, um, I didn't spend a lot of words actually on this, you can enable this feature, so expose GPU memory to direct me uh, CPU memory access. In that case, the memory physically resides on the GPU, you use a function in the library, to expose it to the direct access of the CPU. And at that point, the CPU can directly access it without going through any CUDA mem copy or, I mean, any proprietary library. You can just use the GPU memory as you're using a regular CPU memory buffer. So your actual data path processing is happening in, on the GPU or on the CPU? On, on the GPU, um, that's the, the, the main goal. The actual data processing is happening on the so, GPU. Uh, maybe it says, uh, silly question, but I'm still trying to understand why you need to create the MBUF, the metadata in the CPU in that oh, case. Oh, the metadata you're saying. Yeah, because in order to be compliant with the DPDK uh, stack, right, because when, let's say, you call DPDK receive burst, it has to receive packets and it will provide information to the MBUF uh, metadata, let's say. So it has to be accessible by the CPU anyway. So the best way is to have it here. Of course, if there's the need, you can also move this memory in GP memory and that's it. But um, it will interfere a lot with the DPDK uh, software stack. Okay, thanks. So a question on your um, 5G example, if I understand correctly. Um, the GPU is responsible for like the IQ modulation that you would see in the RF offload path. So what's not shown here then is the data path out of that GPU to a higher layer function in the 5G core? Um, again, sorry, so, I, uh, so I'm just trying to make sure I understand what you're using the GPU for in this case of it's actually doing the RF IQ modulation 
for 5G, and then what's not shown here is what would be the data path out of that to the 5G core yeah, directly. Yeah, okay. Exactly, exactly. But it's also used again for the f for the first staging processing, let's say, to rebuild the the the, the payload. Cap well, yeah, the original payload coming from the reader units well, that were basically uh, dialoguing with wireless clients. So two different tasks on the same GPU, basically. Hi, Lucas here. Um, since you've implemented the DPDK uh, L2 forwarding application uh, for the GPU, were you able to compare it to the original DPDK application yes. in terms of performance, latency? Yes, yes. I um, well, if you if you want to fully understand the benchmarks in the blog post I linked, there are the, the performance benchmarks and, and so on. But generally speaking, you, you have to consider that the L2 forward and the application is not for performance, it's more for demonstration purposes, to show you how to use the library, what are the options that you have. The reason is when, when you do a thing like that, right, hopefully the processing of the packets will take a, a lot of time, so you can have, you can interleave network activity with processing activity. In the L2 forward in the application, the process is almost trivial because you just have to swap the MAC addresses of each packet. So it may not be the best to compare performance GPU versus CPU because again, the, the workload is, 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 um, is trivial, basically it's not so complicated. So you can use that application more as a template. But anyway, I, I did a, a benchmark analysis also in that sense. So, uh, Thanks. Hi, thanks for the talk. So if I got it right, then you need the standard GPU drivers um, to get this kind of support, right? Yeah. And is it also supported with the new open source GPU driver? Um, so the open source GPU driver, um, you, you mean the, um, the open RM effort from NVIDIA? Or yes, yes. You, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that, that should not change. That okay, change. cool. Thanks. Any other questions for Elena? No? All right. Thank you very much.